first. Hey, hold up. Haven't you already done a video on this one, Hellfire? Why yes. Yes, I have. Back about three years ago, when I talked like someone had bopped me on the head with a hammer. That's a bad video. So, I've made the executive decision to hit the redo button and have another crack at it with better hardware, better editing, and a much better script and voiceover. So, without further ado, Doom was released shortly after my birthday in May 2016, of course being developed by the absolute tech wizards over at id Software, one of the oldest and most important development companies to exist in the grand history of gaming. Too bad then that this game was tied to Bethesda Softworks, who used to be a bottom bitch for ZeniMax Media. Thankfully, that's in the past, seeing as id now belongs to Microsoft. Hopefully their immense talents and impressive franchises won't go to complete waste. Please, I just want good FPS games to be mainstream again. Please. The initial build up to the release of Doom was a bit wavy at first, being that the last taste of the franchise we got was Doom 3, which was removed from the original feeling of the first two Hallmark games in the series. Through all original map packs and extra releases that followed Doom 1 and 2, I'm talking stuff like Plutonia, TNT, both of which are part of Final Doom, and Doom 64. The common through line is always focusing in on the lightning fast combat speed, the almost overwhelming amount of enemies, and the wonderful cohesion between enemy types and their relative weaknesses to your weapons. <laughs> To put it mildly and save some sanity in forcing myself to play a bad game for the footage, Doom 3 was lacking in all of these departments by comparison. The immediate follow up to Doom 3 was Rage, another not good game. From titans of the FPS genre to a bunch of very talented programmers who forgot what made their games so good in the first place. There was even a point when Doom 4 was looking like a dull, grey, modern military shooter about a resistance group on Earth fighting against the demons of hell. Then someone, somewhere inside of id, thought that making a game with high mobility and a school bus worth of demons to kill that steadily ramps up the difficulty as the game progresses would be a good idea. This person must have been a messenger sent by he himself. We weren't ready. Not for him. Not for... The Doom Slayer. There's one word that fits these older style of shooters with the fast pace and lots of killing and stuff. It's satisfying. Doom 2016 absolutely crunches that feeling between the steely buns of the Slayer himself. Throughout the entirety of the experience, there's a steady upward climb of insanity. More enemies, more guns, and blood, and guts, and so, so many guts. Just to talk about it real quick and brush it aside from the rest of the game, there's a few side thingies that you can hunt down in each level. The little Doom Guy figures that take up space and just are nice to look at. There's also the Argent Cells that help with upgrading your base stats like health, armor, and ammo. Then you have the Praetor Suit Tokens that you can gather from the Elite Guards. These serve to upgrade your beefy suit itself with stuff like higher explosive resistance, better mapping, finer controls as you move, all that sort of thing. As well as the rune trials which drop particular buffs after a short challenge. 90% of these are useful. Most of what I just mentioned, barring the Argent Cells and runes, you could probably miss over the course of the game and be relatively fine. Getting back on track to the main point of this section however. Remember when I said that thing about cohesion in the opening? That's back in spades. All of the enemies have a way of backing you into a corner with their numerous abilities that require you to constantly adapt on the fly to make sure you don't die. The best part of this game is undoubtedly the combat. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's the only leg holding this entire thing up. 
there's a bunch of weapons you can use in your dealing of death to the denizens of the damned realm, including the starter plasma pistol, which you'll stop using after you learn about the glory kills and acquire the shotgun. There's also a few upgrade bots scattered throughout the world as you roll through the legions of hell like a wheat thresher at the Paralympics. This first one you'll probably be using to add the grenade launcher to your faithful shotgun. All of the acquirable weapons have two mods you can add to them, barring the pistol, the super shoddy, the BFG and the chainsaw I guess. So you've got more than a few options in picking your favourite tool of destruction for the foreseeable future. For every weapon this game grants you, there's another enemy you can test it out on. The possessed, the imps, the soldiers slash hellraisers, the security guards, the pinkies, the hell knights, the barons, the caca dickweeds, even that summoner thing that looks suspiciously close in relation to the archvile. All of these enemies have different little quirks and tricks for you to learn and exploit in your journey of giving the future generations of hell a broken wasteland to roam when they're running from their waking nightmares of the legendary Doom Slayer. And believe you me, you'll start feeling sorry for the demons after your first trip to hell. Like, these poor little fucks think they've still got a chance against you. And that's before you pick up the numerous power-ups that turn the combat into a complete massacre. Like, seriously, picking up a quad damage in some of these arenas might as well be an automatic win. And then there's Berserk. Sweet Christ, the Berserk. <laughs> The combat is a delicate dance between you and the demons, one that resonates in the sound of gunfire. That dance slowly spirals out of control into a chaotic mosh pit where teeth are flying and blood is spraying across the bystanders. When you're running out of ammo as the enemies swarm you so you need to move and chainsaw a low tier enemy because that's all the fuel you've got left then you need to switch to an optimal loadout to ruin the enemy, but there's a more powerful boy spawning in, and he fucks you into a corner before the mobs start flinging ranged enemies at you, and you've already started running out of ammo for the main weapons, and it's all going to shit, and Jesus Christ, why isn't it stopping? It never ends. There's so much happening, and I can't keep track of it. Why are they so relentless? How am I alive? Why do they keep coming? Why is well, it all going on? <laughs> <laughs> that right there is what Doom does to a masterful degree and the reason it's one of the best shooters of the modern millennium. There's a distinct point in playing this game for everyone, regardless of difficulty. When your brain stops actively thinking, when you're not really making any conscious decisions anymore, when a little switch in your little squishy brain flips and you just start reacting to everything in front of you, you bask in the utter slaughter you're bestowing unto the demons. Don't be too surprised if you find yourself smiling when all of the carnage finally stops. And don't be too surprised when you make a sweet mess in your pants after hearing the soundtrack in action. I won't even hide it. It's well known to almost everyone on the channel. I fucking love this soundtrack. Composed by the G-Meister himself, Mick Gordon, even if he was a bit unprofessional with delivering a full soundtrack for the sequel, he still absolutely fucking slaughtered it in this first entry of this revived powerhouse. Apparently the story goes that while Bethesda was trying to organise the ones and zeros for the game, they told Mick not to use any guitars when making the soundtrack. Thankfully, under the grace of every god in the solar pantheon, Mick basically said, fuck that, and used a Damien Platinum 9, the 9 standing for the 9 strings this beast of noise contains, because a traditional 6 string just couldn't go deep enough apparently. Mick also used about a million and one different synthesizers and keyboards of various frequencies, then pumped all of that through a collection of distortion emitters and other musical crap to eventually kick out what would eventually be the final product we got in game. And it's fucking brilliant.
There's something primal about Doom's soundtrack. The heavy distortion obviously plays a part, and Doom has always been linked to the metal scene because, you know, satanic imagery, shit tons of blood and gore, and the type of music that would make a Catholic heavily question their faith are all good reasons to like some music. Mick, along the way of writing one of the most distinct scores in recent memory, invented something called the Doom Compressor, a very specific tool for the job, or preset, I don't know, I don't have access to Mick Gordon's computer to confirm one or the other. This tool helped Mick drag a few of the older Doom tracks to hell and back to upgrade them for modern times along with a healthy slowing of the tempo and an octave drop from his lovely 9-string guitar. Listen to the original E1-M1 from the very first Doom, and then to its equivalent in Doom 2016. <laughs> If there's one thing I can glowingly praise this soundtrack for, as well as everyone involved in the implementation and timing for its activation in any given moment, and the subtle ramping up as you glory kill in the middle of combat, it's that all of it comes together in such a masterful way that it not only feels like your actions are influencing what music is playing, but that there's a constant forward momentum, not just in your gameplay, but in the music as you mow through Hell's legions. The soundtrack can still be separated into ambient and combat tracks, but both of those categories of raw, powerful noise steadily get more and more intense as the game progresses forward. For example, here's a track from one of the earliest combat arenas. And here's probably the most intense track before the final boss. Yeah, you can't tell me the soundtrack doesn't evolve with the player as time rolls by and your slaughter becomes a more bloody and altogether visceral affair. Too bad then that the story is a lukewarm turd by comparison. I don't think I'm lying to too many people when I say that the narrative of Doom 2016 is actively ignored and you shouldn't worry too much about trying to follow the very scarce plot threads as you murder your way through the factories of Mars. Because if the Doom Slayer doesn't give a shit, then why should you? However, for the sake of keeping to trends of the channel, here's the general gist. There's this company, the United Aerospace Corporation, or UAC. They've got this outpost on Mars, with this big cheese type of character named Samuel Hayden running the show, probably on account of him actually being a robot and everything. All is well until Olivia Pierce, one of the head researchers on the Mars facility, starts being a bit too edgy for her own good. This comes immediately after the UAC discovers Argent Energy, a seemingly infinite energy source, which is exactly what Earth needs in this timeline. The big catch to this is that Argent Energy comes from Hell itself as in the physical manifestation of where all the shitty people in the world go to relive their torment until the end of time itself. Or so the good book says anyway. Going off what the game shows us, I'm pretty confident in saying that all of hell is just teeming with demons to try and hold back the Doom Slayer on his cataclysmic revenge quest. Some way, somehow, the demons manage to confine the Doom Slayer to a very special coffin and strip him of his armor. Can't say I blame them, he's probably got a meat axe to match those steely buns of his. While the Doom Slayer is casually chilling out in his coffin, Samuel Hayden leads an expedition into hell itself to find him. At the same time, however, Olivia decides to do some casual human sacrifices within her cult and invites the fodder of hell onto Mars for a good old murder party. By the time Samuel Hayden brings the Doomslayer back to Mars, he cracks open his coffin on account of Mars very 
quickly and rather forcefully going to complete demon shit. Then the Doom Slayer does what the Doom Slayer was doing in hell and dons his fancy suit, grabs a fucking cruise missile's worth of ballistic firepower and engages in a most holy of Ripeth and Terrath. Then the game ends. There's a bunch of little lore tidbits and nods to the original game, and thanks to Doom Eternal, we now know that this Doom Slayer is the original Doom guy from OG Doom way back when. Which makes a Doom, in my mind, the longest running story in first person shooter history. In all seriousness, the narrative of Doom 2016 is merely a vehicle to drag you from location to location and indulge in some lovely demon murder. It doesn't need your full attention for you to follow what's going on, and it's definitely not going to be anyone's top pick for plot development in gaming. It does its job of directing you to the next arena of massacre and not really getting in the way of the vastly better combat. It exists. That's all it really needs to do. Now let's go for a wrap. There's more music ahead. Doom 2016 is a fucking fun time. There's no denying that. And there's almost no excuse not to play it. You can get it on every modern device not called a smartphone. And four years of patches have only increased how crispy smooth this game runs on PC. The gameplay is the meat here and it's a divine experience to immerse yourself into as you throw yourself into hordes of demons and become their waking nightmare that they've only heard about in myths and legends. The soundtrack adds to the feeling of utter badassery that the combat carries along into the game. It's an understatement when I say that this soundtrack by Mick Gordon is the sort of music I want played at my funeral and then everyone can burn my body. The narrative is there. It's a thing that the game has, but it isn't something that's the core feature of the game, and it only serves as a mild distraction to sink your teeth into when you need a breather from the combat itself. Doom 2016 will always go down as the game that saved id, with its successor thoroughly securing the franchise's reputation for years to come, until the rule of three happens and the next game it releases kneecaps the reputation back into the dark realm. And to clear the two big questions I know I'll get from this video, no I haven't played Ancient Gods yet, but I fully intend to, probably gonna do it on stream so keep an eye on the channel for that, and yes, I think Doom Eternal is the better game than Doom 2016. I will admit that the soundtrack is a better composition, but there's more tracks from the listing in Eternal that I like. Plus, the combat is fucking baller. Next video is going to be on another throwback shooter from the good guys at New Blood. I have been the infamous Sir Hellfire, you have been my lovely brethren. Keep yourselves safe out there. I'll see you all in the next one. Ciao.